Let's face it, most real estate newsletters suck. It's just a fact. If you get any of these in your mail, whether it's your email or your regular mail, and you look at them, 99.9% of them are a template from a printer or a marketing company. And all they have to do is put in their latest Photoshop picture of their face, glamour shot, whatever you want to call it. Um, sometimes they throw in like a paragraph. The rest is just statistics, sometimes confusing, sometimes a recipe. But it's never focused on you. It's their souls, their awards, photos of them. What's supposed to happen? when you're reading a real estate newsletter is you're supposed to be reading about you. That's what myneighborhoodnews.com was created to do. This very unique proprietary software has changed absolutely everything for Ontario homeowners. Instead of getting a generic report that does not apply to you at all, every single one of these updates is real-time, AI-powered, and focused on your postal code area. Right now, we are in the middle of a very significant market shift. Depending on who you ask, and depending on the postal code, it is either going to be a very minor sideways movement, or it could be a very dramatic fall off the cliff. Because I've been doing this now for 23 years, and handling properties all over Toronto, GTA, and many other areas of Ontario, thanks to great partnerships I have all over the province and the country, and for that matter, over 72 countries across the world. Uh, in fact, I'm working on a property right now for sale in Colombia. Just so you know that I don't restrict myself to just local. I try to focus on this podcast being a global voice, but also having local tools in place. And that's what this, that's what the reason, the motivation behind myneighborhoodnews.com was always supposed to be, is to give you the very best access to information, no wasted paper, no wasted time on your part. And the best part about this, and this is the part that I do like bragging about, is that with this particular newsletter, there is an 80 to 100% open rate. Depending on the time of year and depending on when people are reading it, usually it's around 75, 80, 85. It's actually hit 100% at some times, meaning that every single person who gets this reads it. Because of the fact that you'll see very, very key metrics posted here that you won't see anywhere else about the postal code that you live in, or very importantly, the postal code that you plan to live in. You need to virtually move in to the neighborhoods that you're interested in. You cannot make the mistake of being an amateur and just sort of looking from behind the fence. You need to be as educated about those, about the market that you're moving into as the people who live there. Do not underestimate the importance of this right now. If you do, it could literally cost you a fortune by making the wrong mistakes. Working with me one-on-one, -on -one, like I do always with my clients, it's one-on-one. -on -one. You're not working with an amateur, you're not working with a rookie or an assistant. The person you're hiring is the person you work with. To me, this is essential. 
So when, whenever it's in the Toronto GTA area, it's me that is the one handling every element of the purchase or sale or both. And when it's outside of the uh, outside of the Toronto GTA area, I've got other partners who work with me on those purchases and sales. But I am very much in the passenger seat on that, uh, along with you. Um, but I'm definitely still in the driver's seat when it comes to making sure that the marketing and anything related to um, selling a property, marketing it, uh, doing podcasts about it, that's all still done 100% from me. So again, most real estate letters, most real estate newsletters, they suck. You really shouldn't sign up for most because you're going to get something that is nothing to do with you and not focused. And unless the person who's setting your newsletter up actually has the software to be able to monitor your postal code area, then you're going to be getting just very general. Again, there, there are something called the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board zones. So there are over, I believe there are over 30 between the east, west and central zones across the city and then the GTA area as well. There's, there, there's, there's, there's a bunch of different zones. But even if you get, for example, uh, let's just use um, downtown Toronto, CO1. Even if you get the CO1 stats, you still need to understand that there are sub levels of stats below that of the different areas within downtown. So this is why the postal code community reports that you see are to me as important or even more than anything to do with just requesting a standard home value report. You need to know what's going on around you because you might not be moving. You might not think about moving, but you should know what's going on with everybody else who is because those sales, good or bad, do affect your property value, just like the rentals happening around you. Because this report that I prepare, the reports that I prepare, don't uh, don't only include sale data, they also include rental data. Because for some of you, that might be the first thing you want to do. You might just want to rent out your property. You might not be ready to sell it. And if you're one of those people, I completely respect it. And it's the reason I created something special just for you guys called the Ontario Executive Rentals Podcast that is specifically focused on helping you get the maximum results from your rental properties as well as, of course, when you're selling with me. So I hope this was educational and I really want to make sure that you set, you, set, uh, you you get right over to myneighborhoodnews.com. Sign up today. You'll also receive, once signed up and once I know where to send the access card, you'll also be getting something called my VIP Podcast Perks card. This is a homeowner savings card that's been designed with you in mind to actually save you at least $1,000 plus even before we ever get together, even before we make a move, or even before we talk. It's that important to me to be investing in relationships even before you might be ready to have any discussions. Because I understand that with some people, they just want the data. They don't want a conversation. They don't want to meet with me. It's not about me. And if it ever in my head feels that way, I remind myself that most people, until they're interested in making a move, most of them just want information. And I totally get that. Nobody wants to have a realtor knocking on their door at dinner time. And number one, I'll never do that. Number two, my goal is to, again, communicate with you. Of course, email is, is probably the least obtrusive way of doing this. And of course, it's about bringing value to you every single time you hear from me, which is what I promise every time you get this weekly report, which from the neighborhood news, you'll get a weekly update on what's going on. And you'll see behind the scenes of what's going on. And you will know more than your neighbors do. And that's a very, very important thing to be. If you're going to be a nosy neighbor, at least be an educated nosy neighbor. So you do know how all of that activity affects your home value. Thanks for tuning in. 
Have a great day.